Recently, I had a conversation with someone who bought this exact 3D printer. This is the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, and this guy said something very interesting. His claims are that this printer is just as good as every other printer on the market, and it can do everything that other modern printers can do. Taken at face value, this statement is not only willfully ignorant, but remarkably untrue. This printer is the Adventure 5M by Flashforge, a printer that's better in every single way, except for one to the Neptune 3 Plus. Not only is this printer remarkably faster, but it also has a more stable motion system, along with the ability for remote connectivity with Wi-Fi and LAN option, as well as connectivity options for built-in cameras. The only feature where the 85M is beat out is in build volume, but if you've never used a larger format bed slinger, then it's not something you would realistically be looking forward to, as the print times can be insanely long. We're not talking hours, but rather several days. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of effort to prove his remarks remarkably incorrect, but you see, humans experience a really interesting phenomenon. This phenomenon would be cognitive dissonance. Two opposing ideas cannot exist at the same magnitude. One always has to win over the other. You see, both the 85M and the Neptune 3 Plus exist in the same relative price point, and it's really hard to believe that you've made the correct purchasing decision while also admitting that there are far superior options in the same price range. Strictly speaking, on an emotional level, sometimes it's really hard to admit that perhaps you made the wrong purchasing decision and wasted your money. And as humans, we have a tendency towards self-comfort, which can unfortunately lead us to believe and say some really stupid things. This printer is the FL Sun T1 Pro, and on paper, it beats almost everything about the 85M. But for the past few months, we barely use it at all. So why is that? By all accounts, the T1 Pro is bigger, better, faster, more impressive, and using more cutting edge technology and motion system. And if you bought this printer today, you would most likely be really happy with your purchase, especially considering the fact that it can take an hour long print from the 85M and finish it in just a handful of minutes. That is until you realize that the T1 Pro sacrifices its quality, reliability, and stability for its speed advantage. And once again, we're met with an uncomfortable reality. On paper, the T1 Pro is an amazing printer, but since they're sacrificing stability and print quality in their pursuit of speed, we have to do some mental jumping jacks to say the T1 Pro is an amazing product, or we simply admit that it is a failure in what it's trying to do. So how do we deal with the uncomfortable realities of being a consumer? Maybe the answer is to realize that all 3D printers just suck. This is the Creality K1C, and for me, this was supposed to be the answer to the missing feature stack that we had with the Adventure 5M. It has a better touch screen, more responsive. It has a better extruder design with features that make it easier to load and unload filament. One of the better features for the K1C was the fact that it has a remote web dashboard, something that's missing in the 85M, along with being a sleek, modern, and stylish printer. But something went horribly wrong. You don't have to look far before you find out that the K1 series has all sorts of issues from quality control to even design decisions that make this printer a near nightmare to own. Even with this reputation, the K1 series is still holding strong in the 3D printing community. And maybe that's the point we should be looking at. In one way or another, all 3D printers suck. And it's a matter of what are you willing to live with or not live with? This is the Flashforge 85X, and this is the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo. Both multicolor systems, since 3D printing is moving rapidly into multi-material 3D printing. These are both printers that we're extremely excited about for different reasons. From the outside, the S1 combo looks like the clear winner with its advanced feature stack compared to the 85X. The S1 combo has a beautiful multi-material system with a built-in dryer, a gorgeous touchscreen that's incredibly responsive and an overall beautiful design. While the 85X is just a 5M with a filament system thrown onto it. And depending on what you're doing, both these printers would still be my top two recommendations for people in the 3D printing community. Now, remember what I said a second ago about all 3D printers suck? Well, that's true. Both of these printers kind of suck. 
But if all 3D printers suck, then why would I recommend either of these? Even though the 85X is lacking in a more advanced feature set, when it comes to production or single color printing, you're not gonna find a more stable platform than the Adventure 5M series. When it comes to a more advanced feature stack, the S1 combo is currently unmatched in its price point, and you're not going to find a better alternative. Between the S1 combo and the 85X, the S1 isn't as strong in the quality control category and can be a little bit of hit or miss. While both these printers are extremely strong recommendations, both of them fall short in one way or another. This is the Pixel 8 Pro, one of the more recent flagship phones on the market. There was a time where the whole world would have been excited about this. Anytime a new phone was launched, the Galaxies, Motorola's, the new iPhone, the whole world was in awe and inspired by progress and innovation. But now it's just another phone and there's nothing really special about it. It does the same thing that every single phone on the market does. It has apps, it can visit the web and you can make phone calls. There's nothing exactly inspiring about any of the flagship devices on the market today. This is a stable technology without a lot of room to grow and expand. And quite likely we're not going to see a lot of awe-inspiring innovations anytime soon. But 3D printing is still an emerging and growing technology. Every printer we've ever touched sucks in one way or another because as consumers and early adopters, we can feel something over the horizon and we know it's there, we know it's tangible, but we're just not there yet. And yeah, the T1 Pro sucks and the K1 series sucks the 85M and the S1 combo. All of them have this in common, but I'm happy for every single one of them. I'm happy that FL Sun is pushing the technology of Delta printers, and I'm happy that Creality is pushing the bounds of consumer electronics, as well as Flash Forge and Anycubic. One of the best parts is as consumers, every time we buy one of these machines, we're funding the research and development of the next generation of 3D printers. So yes, in one way or another, all 3D printers suck. But somebody once told me, if you're not making mistakes, you're not living. And with that in mind, we can safely say the 3D printing industry is definitely alive and well. By the way, before anybody says buy a bamboo, they suck too. <laughs>